Okay, so in this case here, guys, we are looking into your form four first term seminar. Okay, this is the notes we're gonna be using. Oh good, huh? Okay, uh okay, so let me just uh recap a little bit first because your coming midterm exam, right? Supposed to be on July or August. Uh from what we expected, it's supposed to be a full format uh, exam, okay? So full format exam include what? Include paper one, include paper two, include paper three, okay? But I will say paper three, not not to say it's doable, uh, because you know, if you all know paper three is technically your uh, Amali test, okay? So Amali test, uh, I will say school not going to do it uh, when you're all in form four, okay? I, I think last year got school do, uh, but then they wasted a lot of time, a lot of materials, a lot of money, okay? So that's why they... They're not gonna actually go and do paper three again, lah. Uh, uh, so I think your only paper three you're all gonna do uh, is your SPM trials and SPM. Okay. You're only gonna do two two Amali tests. Okay. Uh, but if your school is those who are actually quite dedicated, uh, they can actually do it. Uh, it's not to say it's impossible. Uh, it's possible, but it depends on your your school. Okay. But I will say paper one and paper two. Okay. Uh, so paper one, paper two, uh, if you know paper two is actually hundred marks. Okay, so this one is actually the, the majority of the marks because paper three only 15 marks. Ah, uh, so 15 marks very good. Okay. And then uh, uh for paper one, it's only 40 marks. Okay. So I would say uh, if you see the majority, uh, all the marks come from paper two. Ah, uh, so paper two is uh, the main thing you have practiced all this time. Okay. So for every time you have to practice your essay writing, your procedure writing, okay, and also your paper two, uh, majority all question, all marks come from paper two. Okay. So that's what you have to actually be careful on. So on this case, uh, yeah. Screen not enough to fit. Eh. Okay, so uh what we actually see inside here is we're supposed to actually see like the few topics uh, uh, because in your in your first term exam. Okay, so in your uh first term exam, what we actually predict is uh what is this? Why? Yeah, let me let me try to set something first. Okay, so right now, guys, yeah, uh, we're going to focus mainly today, uh, we're going to focus on paper two, uh, because paper two, as I said, is the marks that you're going to get the most inside here. So on our first exam, uh, your, your July, August exam, I, I think you're going to be more than this topic, okay? But then uh, I'll be focusing on uh, the topics that we're going to learn, we, we have learned for the past few weeks or past few months, okay? So we have chapter two and mainly chapter three, okay? So chapter two, chapter three, the topics are quite limited. So I will say if your exam have chapter two and three only, uh, It'll be very, very easy. Okay. So let, let me try to go through like what we actually have from here. Huh? So uh in overall, uh in chapter two, we have a few things that we actually supposed to know. Uh we have like uh uh what is this? I've got so many things. Okay, so uh, chapter two inside got what? Uh, so the first thing, you, if you all know, uh, chapter two actually got your heating curve, your cooling curve, and then your melting point, boiling point topics. Uh. So we're supposed to actually do this experiment in school. Okay, I mean you all, uh, but then some school actually never do. So I, I cannot say anything. Okay? But most of the school that actually from here, we actually know that uh, we're supposed to actually have your... Uh, hey, what is this? Someone... Okay, so when we go for like nat naphthalene heating test, right? So naphthalene heating test is supposed to be supposed to be when you heat until it melts. So then we try to find the melting point. Then you cool it back down to find the freezing point. So that's why from here you see, oh, uh, we're gonna actually have something like this. So we're gonna have like step one. Okay, you're gonna feel your 
uh, boiling tube with naphthalene, okay? And then eventually you're gonna heat it until, and then of course with your uh, thermometer, with your time taken, okay? And then you see what's the time taken for him to melt, and then you see the temperature every 30 seconds, okay? Something like that. So once you actually have it, once you, you found the melting point, then you pull it back down uh, by using this, this setup, okay? So with this setup back here, we realize that this is actually a, a cooling setup with a special special conical flux. I mean, it's not very special. Right? It's just an empty chemical, chemical flux. Okay. So what happened here? Yeah. Uh, then you're going to actually have a lot of results inside here. Right? So this is like the, the procedure. Uh, I actually had one school exam asked about procedure. So uh, if your teacher mentioned procedure is important, uh, this one possible. Okay. Possible for this one. Uh. Okay. So when we go for this one, uh, they're supposed to have like two results. Uh. So one is the heating curve, go up, constant, go up. One is the cooling curve, go down, constant, go down, okay? So of course here, guys, we actually, I put a lot of discussion inside here. Uh, so the discussion all comes with answers. So uh, these are like common questions in exams. So when you see, when you do when you do heating of naphthalene, okay, you have like, why we don't heat the naphthalene like directly? Why do we have to heat like the Bunsen? Uh, the Bunsen burner have to heat the water buffers, then the water buff only heat the, uh, heat the naphthalene. Uh, so the, the reason for that is because naphthalene is, Flammable and why water bath is used, okay, to distribute heat evenly to ensure even heating. Okay, so this is to ensure even heating. Wait, uh, some student can't join my seminar. Let me let me try to help him. Okay, so uh, uh on this case here, you see, uh, uh, we're supposed to actually go into like, uh, uh, into like the, the reason why we actually heat them, okay, using water bath, okay, uh, to ensure even heating. And then for cooling, uh, also similar thing that's gonna happen. So why we actually put inside a conical flask, even though the conical flask is actually empty. Uh, so the reason for that is supposed to ensure even cooling, okay, and then you have to stir it using the thermometer to actually ensure that the temperature is uniform. Okay. So what happens if you don't stir? If you don't stir, you're supposed to happen super cooling, which is a bad effect. Uh, you're not supposed to actually see super cooling. If you see super cooling, means your reaction is actually wrong. Uh, so what exactly is super cooling? Where you actually see your temperature of cooling liquid drop below its, it, below its normal freezing point, but then uh, you never see solid. Uh, because, because when you actually hit freezing point, you're supposed to see like uh, solid kind of. But then Super cooling means you go below freezing point, but you don't see solid coming up. You don't see something, you don't see freezing coming up. Ah, okay. So that's why on this case here, this is called the super cooling, where it's actually supposed to be a wrong, wrong, uh, wrong occurrence. Okay. This not this is not supposed to happen. So you have to stir it to avoid super cooling. Yeah. Ah, then this is the most common question in the exam. Why temperature become constant when melting and freezing? So there are two different uh two different ways of answering. So if they are talking about heating curve, you have to ensure that. Heat energy is absorbed by naphthalene to overcome the force of attraction between particles. Okay, so it means for uh increasing temperature for heating curve, your energy absorbed is used to overcome force of attraction. That's why your temperature don't go up. Uh, so imagine your temperature. Uh, they're supposed to have like uh different different tasks to do. So they they only can do one task at one time. Okay, so it means that in the beginning your heating curve uh, your temperature go up because why? Because your heat the heat you supply, okay, the heat you supply from Bunsen burner is able to heat up your chemical until a certain temperature. But when they hit the melting point, when they hit, when they actually achieve the melting point, you're supposed to actually achieve your uh, constant temperature. Right? Ah, Talim is here. <laughs> Talim, why you cannot enter just now? Are you took so long. What happened? You, ne you never go to the website and click the link, right? The website having the link, right? Use original website. Nani. I mean, like, what happened to you? <laughs> uh, which website you went to? Suspicious. <laughs> the original websites vanish. Uh. Is it? I mean, is it overloading? You vanish. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, you vanish. Uh. <laughs> hey. What what you talking about earlier? Uh, I was talking about heating and cooling curve. Uh, about the constant temperature, heating, 
uh, cooling okay and stuff so yeah Okay, so uh, once we actually go for heating curve, okay, so heating curve is supposed to actually go for this uh, heat energy absorb so that you actually use to overcome a force of attraction. No? Um, after you after you finish melting, then you continue go because heat will be used to increase temperature. So imagine heat energy uh, is like a person, he got two things to do. Okay, he can either increase temperature or he can overcome force of attraction. Uh, but then he only can do one thing at one time. Lah. Okay. Then when do for cooling, same thing. Okay, heat energy released to the surrounding. Okay, heat energy released to the surrounding is actually balanced by the heat energy released when particles attract one another, one another to form a solid. So the concept of this is because when you actually uh cool down something, right? Uh, you cool down something, it will actually uh decrease in temperature, ma. So temperature is supposed to decrease when you cool down something. But then when a, when when that substance actually freeze, freezing actually releases heat. Okay, actually give out heat. So the heat that you release and then the temperature that is supposed to go down, they balance off each other, then they actually become constant temperature. Ah, so this is a very common question supposed to be appearing in your first term exam. Lah. Okay, so hopefully this one helps you guys a lot. And then eventually, guys, you see like in the next page, we have a, we have a lot of details here. Lah. So I'm not going to go through very detail here because uh, the point of this seminar is to actually do more essay question. So I'm just going to glance through this, okay? We're just going to, uh, you all just go through. And then uh, 2.2, .2, you're supposed to go for subatomic particles. So subatomic particles, we're supposed to have proton, uh, neutron, electron, okay? These are the three subatomic particles, uh, guys. In exam, if they ask you label or name subatomic particles, subatomic particles means these three, okay? Please beware of this, can I? So proton, neutron, electron, and what are the charge of them? Proton is always positive one, electron is always negative one, and then eventually, uh, you see like the neutron is neutral. Uh, okay, then sometimes right, they will ask you to actually put into this thing called the standard representation. So standard representation is always like a big symbol of that chemical. And then the top left is nuclear number, the bottom left is proton number. Uh, just in case guys, what is nuclear number? Hopefully you all remember, nuclear number is the total number of proton and neutron in the nucleus of an atom. Uh, and then what is proton? Number of proton in the nucleus of an atom, guys. The highlighter word uh, must put in. Okay, if you miss out any highlighter word inside here, no marks. Because uh, recently I have one school that I actually done with exam, right? Uh, I told them this already, but some of them they didn't follow. They will say they go and write like total number of proton and neutron. Then no marks. Okay, you have to say total number of proton and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Uh, so this is very important. Uh, so hopefully you'll have an idea about this idea. Uh. Okay, then of course, if you know like nucleon is proton and neutron. Uh, and then if you want to find neutron, you're supposed to take your proton. Okay. Uh, you, to find neutron, you take nucleon minus proton, something like this. Okay. So this one is a simple maths. As, you, as long as you know this is nucleon, this is proton, and you know nucleon is proton plus neutron, you're supposed to can find your neutron easily by taking nucleon minus proton. Yana. Uh, so of course, after this one here, we can actually go into isotopes. So isotopes basically is twins, like triplets we have in chemistry. Uh, so what's the definition for isotope? Again, very important because uh, those who actually go for exam already, uh, they only write same number of proton but different number of neutron. Uh, cannot. You must say atoms of the same element with the same number of proton but different number of neutron. Means you need to write exactly the same sentence as this. Only can get one mark. Uh, okay. No, I want to be this bad lah, okay, no, I want to be so so strict on this. It's because marking scheme really asked about this and you must be like fully uh, the same as what we see inside here. Then you see, oh, uh, atom of the same element with same proton number or about different nuclear number. So I, I mentioned this before last time. You only choose one to memorize. Uh, it's up to you. Which one to choose is up to you. But always stick to the one that you memorize. Don't mix and match. Uh, means that you don't go and say same number of proton, but then different nuclear number. Ah, uh, don't mix top and bottom. Okay, make if as long as you choose one already, then you go along with that. Okay, so that is basically the isotopes we have in our syllabus lah. Ah, uh, then we have some calculation to go through lah. Ah, uh, because you see your oh, uh, isotope means that you see you got magnesium twenty four, magnesium twenty five, magnesium twenty six. Means that you have different uh mass of magnesium, and then they occur naturally. Occur naturally means that out of every hundred atoms ah. Uh, it, there's 79% of it is 
magnesium 24, 10% of it is magnesium 25, 11% of it is magnesium 26. Okay, so this you can do your calculation by taking the mass times percent, mass times percent, mass times percent, and then you plus them together, and then you divide 100, you get your average mass. Ah, so technically, technically, guys, the relative atomic mass, or we call it the natural abundance, okay, is basically the average mass of all the isotope. Ah, so you always remember uh, to, to calculate relative atomic mass of an isotope is mass times percent, mass times percent, mass times percent, plus together, everything divide 100. Uh, then you get your average mass of your isotope, which is called the relative atomic mass. Okay? So guys, after this one here, then we have we have to look, understand that there are some similarities and differences between your isotopes. Uh. So isotopes all have what? Similar proton number. Okay means they're supposed to have similar chemical properties. These are very important. Like Excel RTC4. Why all isotopes have similar chemical properties? Because they've got the same electron arrangement. Uh, means, you see, uh, suppose you see like magnesium uh, is 25, 24, 25, 26. Uh, but then their proton number is the same kind. Uh. So if their proton number is the same, they're supposed to have the same electron arrangement. Then they have, have, have the same chemical properties. Different neutron number. So neutron number actually affect what? Neutron number actually affect physical property. Ah, see this one. So what is physical property? Physical property is such as density, melting point, and boiling point. So different neutron number only affect physical stuff. Don't affect chemical properties. You get it? Huh? Uh, chemical properties is like, it's like uh, if you try to do experiment with it, if you try to burn it, throw it to water, dissolve it to water, they all react almost the same. So this is called uh, similar chemical properties. Uh, then different physical properties mean different density, different mass, different boiling point, different melting point. Ah, okay. Then, uh, so guys, hopefully you guys have a, an idea about this. Okay. So of course, uh, what we actually have is this, is your isotope graphic, uh, in, information. And then after your isotope, we talk about the uses of isotope. Uh, because if you know, isotopes, some of it actually are radioactive. Uh, they, they, they actually release out a little bit of radiation. Uh, but then if you know that radioisotopes uh, is not always bad, sometimes you also have some usage of it. Ah, so what are the usage of your radio isotopes? If you can see from here, radio isotope, you see, all right. Okay, in medical sector, about 60 used for treatment for cancer. In agriculture, phosphorus 32 for your study of uptake of your fertilizer. Then for industrial, sodium 24 to track leakage in gas or oil pipe. Power source, uranium 235 for uh, nuclear power station. Archaeological way, we have carbon 14 for carbon dating to estimate the age of fossil. Uh, okay, uh, I will say to estimate the age of the bone, uh, a, nowadays some teachers don't like this word, I uh, don't know why, okay? But so nowadays they actually change this word to fossil. Uh, okay, to, to estimate the age of fossil. Okay, uh, so uh, try to avoid the word bone, okay? Because I, 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 got, I got here teachers saying that bone not not, not very accurate because bone is not just for bones, it's for all fossils, okay? That's why even the word is at the back, also got lah. Uh, so, Fossil will be the more accurate word for uh, teacher nowadays. Yeah, nah? So, of course, guys, these are all memorization. Make sure you know at least one sample for every sector. Uh, because essay question came up before that. Uh, give an example for uh, radioisotope in every sector and then give the users of them. Uh, and then eight marks. So, there are four factors. Give one sample for each and then give one users for each sample. Then you can get eight marks in that question. Uh, so this is a possible essay question. Uh. So hopefully you guys have a, have an idea about that. Okay. So if okay, moving on. Yeah. Then we have chapter three. Chapter three is all about the calculation. So hopefully you guys have a better idea about it. So before we go for calculation, we have to know like what is relative atomic mass, what is relative molecular mass. Okay. So as we know, uh, atomic mass is the mass of one atom. Uh. Uh, but one atom is so small, uh, so we don't really use uh, any unit to con to calculate them. So we use it. What we really do is we we actually compare between the first and the lightest element to other atom. Okay, so you see, uh, the first standard atom used was hydrogen. Okay, why? Le? Because hydrogen is the lightest of all elements. Okay, that's why you see, uh, usually when we say like, oh, uh, one carbon atom, you use twelve hydrogen atoms to actually uh balance it. It means what? It means that one carbon uh, is 12 times heavier than one hydrogen. You get it? So it means that the atomic mass for one carbon is actually 12. Ah, uh, then if you see like helium atom, uh, the atomic mass for helium is four, is because it's four times heavier than hydrogen atom. So this was the original plan that we're supposed to use to actually or uh, say that this is the atomic mass for helium. 
Ah, okay. But nowadays, uh, we don't really use hydrogen anymore because of the very big disadvantage of hydrogen. It's actually a gas. Ah, so because it is a gas, uh, you kind of it's kind of hard to actually measure the mass of hydrogen uh, accurately. Ah, because if you want to compare a mass with a gas, very hard kind of you have to you need a container, you need to like do calculation, a lot of stuff. Okay, what if the container got a leakage? Then GG. Ah, so in this case here, guys, you have to understand that we the the initial plan is to compare with hydrogen because he's the first and lightest element of all uh, elements, okay? But then because it's very hard to handle, now we actually swap to another one. Uh, so you see, during the international agreement, okay, of your 1961, very long ago, uh, they don't use hydrogen anymore. Instead, they use the carbon-12, but then uh, they cut your carbon-12 into 12 pieces. Why? Uh? Because imagine, uh, just like I told you, like, one carbon is, uh, one, one carbon is equal to 12 hydrogen, right? So what if I cut my carbon into 12 pieces? So one piece of this is actually equals to one hydrogen. Ah, you get it? You get it? Ah, so why we need to do like this? Eh? Because this carbon ah, is a solid and then it's very cheap. It's easily available, easily handled. So that's the advantage of it. You see, easily available, solid at room temperature. Okay, wait ah. Easily available, solid at room to condition, and then the abundance of carbon-12 is almost 98.89%. Means that uh, most of the carbon that you all have is carbon-12. Uh, so it will be it will be more uh, financially advisable to actually use carbon-12 instead of hydrogen. Hydrogen is very hard to handle. You, like you have container for a gas, no need. Okay, now you use one piece of 1 over 12 carbon atom. Okay, this actually stands for one hydrogen. So you see. Yeah, let me let me write this. Yeah, so this actually stands for one H, one hydrogen. Okay, you see, so you see, uh, this, the one that you see on top and the one that you see at the bottom is actually the same thing. Just that because hydrogen is very hard to handle, we change it to one over twelve of carbon atom. Okay, can uh, So from here, guys, exam came up before. They ask you why don't we use hydrogen? Why we go and use carbon twelve? Why we going to use one over twelve of a carbon twelve atom? The first and easiest answer is easily available and it's easy to handle. Ah, solid at room condition. But solid means you just you just are able to like cut smaller pieces and then you put on a weighing scale. That's all. Ah, no need to like store in using a gas jar, this and that. Okay. Ah, very, very hard to do. Lah. So that's why this is actually the we use this as a relative atomic mass. Okay. So but then we got relative molecular mass, relative formula mass. So what's the difference there? Eh? Ah, this time we say, yeah. Atomic mass is where you compare with a carbon 12 kind of. Molecular mass is a mass of a molecule. Formula mass is the mass of a formula unit, which is ions. Okay, so technically, yeah, atomic mass is the mass of one atom, right? But molecular mass and formula mass is the total mass of that molecule and the total mass of that uh ionic compound. Okay, of that of that chemical Ah, uh, so usually, guys, just imagine this: atomic mass is like C equals to twelve, O equals to sixteen. Okay, and then like Na equals to twenty three. Okay, and then like Cl equals to 35.5. This is atomic mass. Okay, always given by question. Don't have to memorize. Okay, but what's relative molecular mass? Means that say if I tell you that the molecule is carbon dioxide, you do your maths so 12 plus 16 times 2. That's molecular mass. That the total mass here is molecular mass because it's the mass of this molecule. You get it? Then what is formula mass? Means if I tell you there's a chemical with charge called sodium chloride, what is the Total mass of this will be 23 plus 35.5. The mass that you get here is formula mass. Ah, so technically, molecular mass and formula mass is total mass. But total mass for different chemicals. Ah. One is for molecule, one is for ion. Okay. But I will say the, the overall idea is the same. Molecular mass and formula mass is just the total mass. And guys, remember all these things, all this mass ah, can use one word to sim simplify it. We all call them the Molar mass. Remember this word? A uh, little in for, formula we learned before. Lah. So when we have molar mass, we know that we have a formula using mass over molar mass. Correct. Okay. So hopefully, guys, we all have this uh, idea about that. So once we know like this, the basic RAM, RMM, and RFM. By the way, guys, this is RFM, uh, typo. Okay, this is RFM, relative formula mass. But overall, they are still the same, uh, the total mass of the specific chemical. <laughs> 
Okay, so what happened here is uh, if you move on, okay, I'm moving on. Ah, uh, uh, do you see? We're gonna link to more. And what is more? More is the SI unit of amount of a substance. So technically, more is like a a unit that is used by every chemistry. Okay, I mean every chemistry scientist. Okay, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, this student cannot judge us. Okay, so for not for more, as we say that we have to actually uh understand it as a unit that we use in chemistry. Uh, because can you measure the mass of one atom? Very small amount, right? So what is the minimum amount for you for scientists to actually get the mass uh, of a of a specific atom? So usually we say. One mole of substance contains 6.02 times 10 to the power of 10 tree elementary entities of a substance. Uh, it means that to get like uh to get your atom or maybe your chemical to a measurable unit, uh, you must at least need this amount of particles. Uh, right? Because one particle very small. Uh, so you need this amount of particles to get into a measurable uh uh measurement for us to use in daily life. Okay, so that's why. We actually have this thing called the Avogadro constant, where the number is the one that we said just now, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 10 tree. And I say, guys, Avogadro uh, is not Avocado. Uh, uh, I see. The handsome face of Avogadro constant is named after a famous Italian scientist, Amido Avogadro. Ah, uh, see, guys, I don't know whether is this the, the actual face of him, uh, but then very handsome. Uh. <laughs> the Avocado, babe. Ah, he, he looks like a, ah, Yash, you, you see, he looks like monkey. Ah, guys, Yash said this, ah, I didn't say this, ah, I just, I just saying out what Yash saying. He looks like a monkey in Madagascar. <laughs> okay, one more contains, so one more contains this amount of particles. Yes, one more contains this amount of particles. Ah, that's why you see, ah, like usually when we say the, the, the formula for number of more that relates to particles is what? Ah, uh, number of more equals to number of particles over Avogadro constant, right? If you want to get one, uh, you're supposed to know that this is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 10 tree. Uh, so how many particles equals to one more? Means this one also must be the same number. Kind of. uh, so yes, technically, uh, your sentence is correct. One more equals to that amount of particles. Okay. Uh, so that's why from here, you see, uh, we're going to actually have this formula. Okay. So in short form, uh, I write this. NOP equals to NOP. Uh, NOM equals to NOP over NA. Uh, I very blur particles atom. Uh, see, uh, so particle uh, actually include atom, molecule, ion. So next time when they say type of particle, you're supposed to go under this tree. Okay. Uh, because I see before students, uh, they say like type of particle, then they go and write like uh, proton, neutron, electron. Wrong. Okay. Type of particle supposed to be atom, molecule, ion. Okay. Because Ah, yes. Proton, neutron, electron is called subatomic particle. Different thing. This one is particle. That one is subatomic particle. Ah, so again, uh, guys, you see, uh, subatomic particle, subatomic particle is proton, neutron, electron. Ah, okay. Then particle, type of particle is atom, molecule, ion. Okay, now you see the, the difference, huh? And then like uh different state, ah, uh, different physical state is solid liquid gas. Okay, please make sure you all know the difference between them. Okay, this one is called physical state. Okay, type of particle. Okay, so physical state got solid liquid gas, different subatomic particle, proton, neutron, electron, different type of particle, atom molecule, ion. Okay, can I, can I? So, guys, I know this one, a uh, common mistake in your first exam. Confirm, okay? So, please be aware, aware of this. So, if the exam say, uh, list or state the type of particle, don't go and write solid liquid gas. Uh. Okay, follow this one. Follow this, this category, okay? So, if okay, then you move on to some uh, pictures to, to let you understand more about what is atom, what's molecule, what's ion. Atom means that you only have one type of element inside the inside the inside the substance. So you see, copper wire is all copper. 
So we call this atomic substance. But then you see water. Uh, water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen mixed together. Kind of. This is called molecule. Ah, ionic air is also mixing together with other things, but got charge. So more, the difference between molecule and ionic, uh, this one is no charge, this one got charge. That's the difference. Ah, they are still mixing stuff together, but then one got charge, one got no charge. Okay. Atomic confirm no charge uh, because atom itself, only one atom by itself, uh, confirm got no charge. Uh. Okay. So you, you understand this part? Uh? So we call this the atom, molecule, and ion. Okay. So beside this one here, yeah, after we know the atom, molecule, ion, then we can actually go for our uh, understanding from here. You're going to actually apply your calculation. Okay. What if I give you like three mole? Okay. Then you have to actually use your formula. Okay. Your uh, number of particles over Avogadro constant. Okay. Something like that. So guys, in this case here, if you can, let's move on to your mass over molar mass. Ah, so what is the molar mass? It's the mass of one mole of a specific substance, which is the one that actually is now. Ah, your mass can include, okay, your molar mass include RAM, RMM, and RFM. Ah, total mass of that chemical. Okay, total, total atomic mass of the chemical. So like copper is 64. Okay, but water is H and O. Ma. So if you plus the H and O together, ah, then... Uh, NaCl, you plus the Na and the Cl together, you get the total formula mass of the chemical. Uh, so technically, molar mass is just taking all the atomic mass plus together. Uh, but then you have to depend on what is the formula. Lah. Okay. So to use molar mass, you're going to take mass over molar mass. Okay. So this is this number of calculation. After this one here, we also have the last formula, which is uh, volume over molar volume. Okay. So what is volume over molar volume? Okay. So technically, we know... Uh, Molar volume is also a fixed value. Depending on room condition or standard condition, you're going to use different uh, different values. So if you are talking about room condition, you're going to use 24. If you are talking about standard condition, you're going to use 22.4 as your molar volume. Then volume the use here is always in dm cube. Uh, so make sure your dm cube is equals to 1000 cm cube. Just in case if they give you in cm cube, you need to convert it to dm cube by dividing 1000 or times 1000 depending on situation. Okay, so... Make sure this case, yeah, guys. Yeah, so we got that room condition, center condition, and then uh usually they will ask you what I think. You see, yeah. Uh, so one more of oxygen, one more of carbon dioxide, one more of uh, ammonia, no matter what gas, uh, standard condition is always the same value. So that's why molar volume uh, got nothing to nothing to plus together. Not like molar mass, molar mass has to plus 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 plus, but molar volume only plus because gas uh gas molar volume uh, is fixed, it depends on the room and standard condition are not affected by type of particle, not affected by type of molecule, okay? So molar volume, fixed value, two choose one, okay? Usually, again, exam will give, so that don't have to worry about that, okay? So if okay, then you move on into all this, like, uh, number of moles, okay, number of uh, calculation from here. So in general, we're supposed to have, like, three formulas, you see, huh? so we have number of moles equals to mass over molar mass, volume over molar volume, particles over Avogadro constant. Okay, so guys, do you see that we actually use this uh uh explanation? You see, uh, let's say mass over molar mass, mass is like chicken, volume is like uh drinks, then, then particles is like vegetables. So if you want to actually find any values, you always have to convert it back to money first. So number of more is like money. Ah, uh, can you use vegetable to go and buy chicken? Ah, uh, no more system butter nowadays, ah. Uh. Yeah, okay. I know, I know sejarah got learned, okay. So last time got system butter, man. now we we are modern people, okay? If you want to go and find mass, okay? But then you only got particle. So how am I supposed to go from particle to mass? Find number of movers, then find, then use this second formula. Ah, so always link to number of movers, then only you go to your mass over molar mass, okay? So guys, this is just a sample to give you, to, to let you guys have a look on how, how we do this calculation. Later, I will do question about this now. Nah. So this one just sample, just look through it. So once we have this, and finally is the empirical formula. Empirical formula got two experiments. One is this, okay, the magnesium oxide formula, where you actually have to do this experiment in school. Anyone did this in school already? Because I I actually heard a lot of school did this already. Ah, okay. Oh, we young did already. Ah. Oh, that was fast. Chen haven't do. Ah. How about how about Yash, your school? KK do already. Or not? Oh, I think KK just entered 
chapter three, right? Heaven, heaven actually, ha ha heaven actually reached this point. Ah, just entered here. Talib also not even entered this point yet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got school. Oh. Finish this experiment already. Ah, uh, oh yeah, oh, we are you from five. Oh. Hey, we are. I just remember that you are from five. <laughs> Hello, from five don't go right? today. From five got what? Uh, BM and English don't go. Hi, uh, why why come from four? Can she? Forgot you already, no la, because I expect from four is from four student come ah. Hi, yeah, uh, we young. You from five come from four. Why you don't go BNBI? Your BNBI very good already now, is it? <laughs> no la, we young. I never forget you, never forget you. I remember you again. Okay? Ah, uh, recap, recap. Okay, okay. Hi. Okay, so when you go for this uh magnesium oxide uh topics, right? You're gonna actually like uh, remember how it's supposed to do. So first of all, you're going to measure some mass, some initial mass. You measure the... Uh, well, young miss teacher, but you halal him. No, 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 no. I'm very good one, okay? I know you miss him, okay? It's okay, stay here, stay here. Uh, I want to kick you, I kick you away early, early. <laughs> okay, but fun or not, okay? You see this seminar, you all can enter freely to whatever class you want. Ah, uh, okay, quite interesting, oh. I, I recently just set this up quite fun. Okay. Okay, so you all have fun with this. Huh? <laughs> okay, so you see, huh? uh, when you go for this experiment, huh, we have like magnesium reburn, and then you're supposed to burn it to actually form magnesium oxide. So why do we want to do this? Because you see, huh, the, the topic of this uh, this thing is about empirical formula. Huh? And we all know empirical formula is supposed to be like the simplest whole number of a certain, certain chemical. So let's say if I say magnesium oxide is between mag magnesium and oxygen kind of. But how do I know the ratio between Mg is MgO or MgO2 or maybe Mg2O or maybe Mg2O3? How I know that? I don't know. Much, right? So scientists to know, okay, for the scientists to actually know what is the ratio between Mg and O, they do this experiment to get the mass of magnesium and oxygen for complete reaction. Ah, So how to actually do this? Eh? So first, they usually measure like this. You see, measure the mass of crucible and lead. Okay. Then they will put in the magnesium ribbon after they clean with sandpaper. Huh? They, then they measure again mass of the lead, crucible, and magnesium ribbon. Okay. Did you watch empirical formula again? Huh? Hey, let me see. Huh? Did they actually put in the definition here? Hey, they never put ah, okay. Never mind. Empirical formula is. Hey, wait, huh? I'm lagging again. Okay. It's the uh, formula that shows. The simplest whole number ratio of each atom <coughs> of every element in a compound. Okay, guys, I'm not kidding you. Exam uh, must write this sentence. You see, teacher, can I just stop at simplest whole number ratio? must continue after simplest whole number ratio of each atom of every element in a compound. Okay. If you never list like each element, each atom of every element in a compound, no marks. Okay. Very strict on empirical formula definition. You know? So write this down first because later uh later exam a uh, later exercise I'm gonna actually do, do it now. Uh. So what happened here is, yeah, uh, after the definition, then you can go for the 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 better understanding idea. Okay. So on this case here is yeah, after we know the definition, we're supposed to like find the mass of magnesium and oxygen separately. So how do we get mass of magnesium only and the mass of oxygen only? Ah, so yeah. So after we put the magnesium ribbon in, we measure again. Okay, that's the mass after putting in the magnesium ribbon. Then you're gonna heat, 
you heat, 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 heat until the reaction is complete, then you have magnesium oxide. Ah, because the, the, the understanding here is Mg plus O2 after heat become MgO. Ah, you see that? So after heat, oh, you're supposed to get the mass of magnesium oxide. Oh. So with this, with this uh, information, then you can actually separately find your mass of Mg and mass of oxygen. So with this case here, you see, yeah, I will take B minus A. Why B minus A? Because to find the mass of Mg, I need to take the mass of this whole thing minus off the mass of the crucible and then you get the mass of magnesium. Then for mass of oxygen, how to do that? You're going to take the total mass of this minus off the total mass of the lead crucible and magnesium. Then like this, uh, you can minus minus, you get the mass of oxygen. Ah, okay. So with this understanding, you get this and then you can calculate number of mole, calculate simplest ratio, then you can know the ratio between Mg and O. Okay, nah? uh, so because of this understanding, you know that uh, they, they, are, they will ask you some questions. Lah. Okay. So first of all, they will usually ask you to like ask they ask you like why you send paper rate. Why do you actually send paper the uh the magnesium ribbon to remove the oxide layer of the magnesium tape and name the white film that you produce is the magnesium oxide. But they will ask you a few things. Yeah, there are some precautions that you have to be careful. For this test, uh, you're supposed to open and close the the lid of the of the crucible. Okay, but why? Ah, so when you when you start burning, you're supposed to close the lid because to prevent the white film from escaping. Okay, but then oh, you cannot close all the time. You must open for maybe once in a while. Lah. Ah, but why you need to open it? Ah, because you need to actually allow air to enter the crucible so that oxygen can react with magnesium tape. If you don't open ah, the oxygen inside you up already. Ah. You can't get a complete reaction. Ah, so that's why you have to open, allow oxygen, close, prevent white film from escaping, Open again, allow oxygen to go in. Close again to prevent white film from escaping. I see. So it's a repeated process. Okay. And finally, why? How do we actually uh, achieve complete reaction? You're supposed to actually heating, cooling, and weighing process is repeated until until a constant mass is obtained. Uh, if you don't do this, uh, how you know your experiment is done? You don't know what man, uh, because your result is your mass. So you have to do, keep repeat your experiment. Until you get your mass, like for the past three times, it's the same mass. Then you, you know the experiment is complete. So to ensure that the magnesium is completely burned to form the white film, to form the magnesium oxide. Okay, So this is the reason for it. So on this case, you see, uh, so what will happen if the white film is released to environment? If white film fly away, uh, then the mass get affected. Uh. If the mass get affected, then obviously then you're going to actually have an uh, a inaccurate result. Okay, so guys, if this one okay, ah, uh, uh, moving on. There's the other experiment uh, is for copper oxide. Copper two oxide must use this one. Cannot use this one. Ah, uh, why copper two oxide cannot use this test? Ah, uh? because of uh, the reason why we can burn Mg and oxygen to form MgO is because magnesium is a reactive metal. So because in the reactivity series we know that ah uh, it's reactive to oxygen, very good. But if, do you think copper is reactive to oxygen? If you check the reactivity series in your form 3, ah, copper, like, wow, one of the lowest one. Uh, so you can see that there's no reaction for that. So copper, very hard to have reaction with oxygen. So that's why they don't use this. If you say, teacher, I, I think can ma, copper, even though it's like low, but then it's not that low. Ma, right? uh, I would say, yes, you can still react copper with oxygen, but then uh, it will take you very long. It's not like few minutes can finish. You need to hit few hours only can have your copper and oxygen. Ah, so it's not very doable in your science lab, right? Now. So that's why for copper uh, determination of empirical formula, you cannot use direct heating. Ah, you only can do what? You only can do the next one is actually the displacement of uh, metals. So what is displacement? Okay, see, uh, the whole concept here uh, is it got a lot of numbers, right? Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, so many things. Right? So what is really important is the one in the middle. Okay, but then, uh, how this test is going to actually start? Uh? First of all, we, we started off with copper oxide. Means your teacher will give you CuO. Okay? But if you want to get the mass of Cu and O separately, I want to remove the O. So how do I remove the O? I will react it with hydrogen gas. Why? Because hydrogen is more reactive than copper. So he can snatch away the oxygen from copper, become H2O and Cu. You see that? Ah, uh, But then uh, the question is, how I get H2? Ah, uh, how do we get H2 suddenly? It's actually from number four. Ah, uh, it's where your hydrochloric acid 
plus zinc granule, which is a zinc zinc solid, uh, then you will get that it will snatch the hydrochlor the hydrochloric acid, the Cl, become zinc chloride, and remove the hydrogen as hydrogen gas. So technically, number four is not a main reaction; it's actually there to produce hydrogen gas. So example will ask you like, why we use acid and zinc to produce hydrogen gas? Then why we produce hydrogen gas? For you to use it on the top. Ah, to actually snatch the oxygen from water and copper. Ah, so this will be the, uh, the understanding. Lah. Okay. So if okay with this, you will realize that our game will get like different amount of uh, results. Lah. So the mass of glass tube, and then the mass of the glass tube with the powder, initial powder. But after reaction, uh, you only left with glass tube plus copper, no more oxygen. Ah, so if you want the mass of copper, you should take this minus glass tube. But if you want to take the mass of oxygen, you should take number two, is that, uh, minus of the mass of glass tube and copper. So you, then you only can get the mass of oxygen. Okay. So once again, you have to repeat this process, heating, cooling, cooling until constant mass is obtained. Then only you, you can consider your reaction is done. So again, discussion given here, uh, uh, what is the purpose of zinc, uh, zinc and hydrochloric acid? Produce hydrogen gas. Okay. Why you need to flow your hydrogen gas through the glass tube before starting to remove all the air? Because hey, I remember I mentioned this before. If you heat H2 and O2 together, uh, might explode. Uh, so to avoid explosion, you need to actually have something like this. Okay. So you have to flow your hydrogen gas continuously. Then uh same thing, why you have to even after you end the experiment, okay, you have to allow your hydrogen gas to flow to room temperature. Because if you stop immediately after you finish your experiment, uh, your copper is still hot. Your hot copper might actually react with the oxygen a little bit, then it will affect your mass of your copper. Uh, so prevent air from entering the apparatus because oxygen in air will oxidize the hot copper back to copper to oxide. Then you wasted your time. Uh, yeah. So you need to actually avoid this from happening. Then why do heating, cooling, and weighing process need to be actually repeated? And show all copper to oxide are completely changed to copper. Okay, so guys, hopefully you guys have a better idea about this whole experiment. Okay, to remove air is O2. Yes, yeah, remove air is O2. Ah, uh, because H2 and O2 heat together, kaboom, explosion. Okay, I mean, like it's not gonna kill you, lah. Uh, maybe the glass tube just gonna actually break. Okay, yeah, nah? so that is to avoid explosion. Okay, but then you don't have to go until there, lah. They just mentioned that to remove air. So if okay with this, then uh, the next page is all the formulas that we actually have in our in our form four form five chemistry. Okay, so take this as a as a cheat sheet. If you want to know the symbol of metal or any gas or any acid, comes to you come come back to here. You want to know for the charge of a specific ion? Uh, what's the charge of K? What's the charge of uh, sodium? What's the charge of uh, hydrogen? Come to here. Ah, okay. So these are the 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 formulas of all chemicals in your form four and form five. Ah, uh, so means like uh, even Wei Yang is from five. Okay, it's good to have this also. Uh, just in case if you forgot your formula. <laughs> okay. Can I? So of course, guys, right now, let's try to do some question. Uh. So uh, I will do one question each topic. Hopefully, I can do uh at least like three to four questions. Okay. Uh, so I will start from the hard one first because hard one very hard to do. Okay? I'll start from the hard, hard question first. Let's go for essay. Let's go for essay question such as page number uh page number 25. Okay, guys, go for page number 25. Where are my iPad lagging? Uh, let me let me restart my app. Okay, I'll mainly focus on essay. Okay, because you all never do essay before, man. Eh? They don't say teacher, what is essay? Is essay like writing six paragraph like DM? No ma, okay. So, so we do one essay question. Huh? Okay, page number 25. Okay. So right now, you see, eh? uh, when you look at this, like these are three different what guys, what is this? Looks like a solid, liquid, gas. Ah, uh, different state. Very good. Ah, uh, these are not particles, ah. Uh. 
they are not different particles. Huh? They are all the same particles, but different state. Okay. So now compare them in terms of arrangement, movement, attraction forces, and kinetic energy. 12 marks. Guys, have you seen a question that takes you 12 marks? Ah, okay. So, oh my God. <laughs> but then if you look at my, my way of answering, do you realize that a table solves everything? When you Whenever you guys see this thing in the exam, uh, compare, table is your best friend. Okay, I will say table is the best way of answering a comparison question. Okay, when in doubt, use table. Ah, draw a table. Okay, when in doubt, draw a table. Sorry, very cool. <laughs> okay, 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 so uh, uh, on this case, you see, when we have solid, liquid, and gas, uh, how do solid particles arrange? Ah, uh, come, give me some keywords. How solid particles arrange? They, if you look at the picture, they say they give you a key name. It's compact, okay, but not not accurate enough. Ah, oxidizing agent. Ah. wait, what the hell? Wait, uh, what is suddenly with this oxidizing agent? Hi, uh, ah, tightly packed. Very good. That's one word. Okay, packed closely. That's very good also. Okay, and very good. Ah, guys, you all say packed closely. Ah, but you all, but you all miss out one word. What word is that? Orderly manner. So you see, my first answer here is supposed to be, okay, wait, my effect is still lagging in. Particles are close together and arranged in orderly manner. So this close together, right? You can say packed closely, okay, tightly packed, okay, also can. Okay, as long you say like packed closely or close together, but then you must also mention orderly manner. Uh, if you miss out the word orderly manner, you lose this one mark. Uh, then how about liquid? How liquid arranged? Ah, liquid is further apart. And then, are they in orderly manner? No, ah, they're like, anyway. So we, what do we call that? We call that the random arrangement. Random random manner or not orderly manner. Ah, packed loosely. Uh, you don't call it packed loosely anymore because it's not packed. Ah, so you're going to use this word called further apart. Okay. For a far apart, also can. Okay, and then not orderly arranged. Ah, guys, these are the keywords. Ah, one miss out one keyword here, then cannot. Then, how about gas? Gas is very far apart. You must use the word very far apart. Ah, then you see, not orderly manner. So, very far apart. Not orderly arranged. Okay, guys, three marks, three over 12, settle. But then it seems like you all never actually get, hit the keyword. Uh, see, see. That's what I worried about. Uh, you all have this information, you all have the knowledge, uh, but you all miss the keyword. Uh, that's what I actually worry about. Okay, so guys, do more exercise. That's, that's the only way. Because once you're familiar with the marking scheme, then you can hit the keyword easier. Uh, okay, you, because... We always doing. We always do like, uh, teaching, teaching, teaching. You all absorb, absorb, absorb. You all have the knowledge, uh, but seems like you all cannot hit the keyword. Uh, okay, so hitting keyword is very, very important in chemistry, uh. Okay, now how about the movement of particles? How solid particle move? Vibrate, ah, uh, vibrate and rotate at fixed position. That's the perfect answer. Yeah, uh, we young. You form five, still cannot do this, ah. Uh. Then you GG, oh. luckily you can answer me. Eh? <laughs> hey, but Muyang, you got from four notes, man. I mean, oh no, oh, okay, okay, okay. You only get from five, right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, then how about liquid? So, how liquid move? So, for liquid, now they can actually move around randomly. Ah, so, constantly moving freely around. Okay, move around freely. Collide with the wall. No need. No need to say collide. Just say moving. Moving freely. Uh, then for gas is moving at high speed. Moving freely at high speed. Means faster. They move faster. Uh, you can say move faster also can. As long as you have the difference between move freely and move faster. Also can. <clears throat> Let me get my water, guys. You all right, eh?
Okay, now after arrangement, after movement, now we're going to go for attraction forces. So guys, what's the attraction force between particles inside solid? Okay, how do we understand particles attraction force? So I always say uh, attraction force uh, is like you and your boyfriend or me, you and your girlfriend. Okay? If you all sitting together every day, is your relationship strong or weak? Ah, okay, so sitting together every day, very sweet, uh, definitely strong force. Ah, so for attraction force between particles for solid, it's strong. Okay. But for liquid, uh, obviously they are part, they are further apart, right? So when they are further apart, they, they, they're supposed to be also strong, but you have to dif differentiate between solid and liquid, right? So you have to say moderately strong or moderately weak. Ah, so either one, you can say moderately strong or moderately weak, up to you. As long as you put the word moderately. Okay. Then for gas, very far apart, guys. You and your girlfriend very far apart. Weak attraction force. Very weak. How about strong but less than solid? Acceptable. Acceptable. Ah, uh, you can say strong, uh, strong attraction force, but less, but uh, but weaker than solid. Also possible. Okay, but you don't use the word less than solid, uh, because uh, I'm supposed to say weaker than solid. More than really strong, can. As long as you, so I would say the easiest way to answer this is the word moderately. Moderately strong or moderately weak. Okay, then lastly is kinetic energy. What's kinetic energy? Can I say me? Cannot. What? Medium, medium strong, medium weak. The word medium, not, not media core. <laughs> wow, very powerful eh, or England. Ayah, use moderate can lah. Don't have to use until so powerful English term lah. Ayah. <laughs> testing chemistry, eh? not testing of English eh. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, in the next one, you see, uh, kinetic energy is what? It's the energy for particles to move, right? So, do you think solid particles can move a lot? Can move a lot? Can not, right? They, they only can vibrate and rotate. So, very small movement. So, there is low kinetic energy. Uh, liquid can flow, deal, can move. Uh, so, it's moderately high. Then, gas is moving very far, very fast. So, high. High kinetic energy. Moderately is our best friend. Yeah. <laughs> so liquid is all about moderate. Can write moderately low for liquid? Can? Can? How about very high? Okay. Acceptable. <laughs> You're, you're very specific on all the terms, huh? Good, good, good. Okay, you guys, this 12 marks, not very hard, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, you might Think that 12 marks is going to be a very long, long way to get. But actually, I would say in biophysical chemistry, right, most of the time, all these uh, questions with a lot of marks, right, they can actually have a simple way to score. Ah, we work smart, not work hard. Ah, okay, we try to actually answer them in a very smart way. Table form, in comparison, always is the best choice. Okay? Can I? Ah, so in this case, guys, after this one, you see, yeah. Figure below shows the heating curve of acetamide over a period of time. Explain the state of particles at stages PQR, 10 marks. <laughs> and guys, this is how essay question works. Huh? Usually in one essay question, it's 20 marks. So in the 20 marks, it can, it can be like 10, 5, 5, or maybe 8, 6, 6, something like that. Okay, they will split like your 20 marks into like uh, 3 to 4 different questions, and then they will allocate the marks accordingly. Okay. Cry, don't cry lah, very easy one, you see. Guys, they say explain the state. Guys, what is the state? Solid, liquid, gas. Karayana. So what is the state for solid, ah, sorry, for P, Q? So for P is solid. Q, solid and liquid. R is liquid. So they already give you this, but they say explain. So what happened at P? To get you 10 marks. 
Ah, I would say uh, the part to give you the most marks, right? It's supposed to be Q. Why? Because Q, you can explain why temperature constant marks. Right? So that side gives you more marks. So it means that your P and R, right, supposed to have lesser marks allocation. So you can have a, like a brainstorm structure marks allocation in your, in your mind. Say, hmm, I think this question now, uh, more marks are supposed to appear in the middle because of constant temperature. Ah, okay. Then you can have lesser marks on uh, P and R. So what we can say about the, the beginning, the beginning of P. Ah, so P, uh, correct? Kinetic energy increases, very good. So temperature increase, kinetic energy increase. Why? Because they absorb energy and actually move faster. Oh, so that's actually P. So you see, kinetic, the particles absorb the energy, kinetic energy increases, vibrate faster. Ah, three marks. Okay. Not to say very hard, ma. Okay. But uh, how about at Q? Q, the energy, they still absorb energy or not? Yes, ah. Uh, for Q, still absorb energy, ah. Uh, but the energy absorb, ah. Uh, is it used to increase kinetic energy? Is it used to vibrate faster? Ah, no. It's to overcome forces of attraction. Very good. Okay. That's why for Q, you have to say that particle also absorb energy. So you see, you get a max for the absorb energy. Okay. So because you say teacher, how it's the same thing. Do we get max for both? Yes. Because you are trying to tell, tell teacher that P also absorb heat, Q also absorb heat, but they absorb heat to do different stuff. Ah, okay. So heat it's and heat energy is absorbed to use to overcome force of attraction between particles. Some particles start to move freely and it melts. Ah, the melting point. Okay. But then after Q, which is when they start to become liquid, R. Ah, do you think they still absorb energy? Yes, they do. So therefore, your first sentence is gonna start with again absorb heat energy, but then again, they're gonna actually Kinetic energy increases and particle move faster. So you see, P and Q, P and R is the same answer. Ah, but the only difference is here is vibrate faster, here is move faster. Because solid is vibrate, liquid is move. Okay, you see, P, R, same, same. Ah, even with all this same sentence, right? You get you get marks for all sentence. Ah, karena. Thanks. You are right, huh? Well, I look for the next question, huh? Also, essay, guys. Getting views of essay, huh? Um... Essay can write point form. Uh, I would say point form is your last choice. Okay. At point form is your last choice. Means this is how I give you all in, in point form, right? Okay. So this point form is because I want to make you guys have uh better uh, better revision way. So next time when you read this answer, you all understand faster. In exam, uh, it's better to write in sentence because teacher always prefer sentence. Ah, but I would say actually got teacher prefer point form. Ah, but point form because not very official, ma. not not very uh, acceptable by a majority of teacher. So I would say make sure you just uh, put them in sentence, put them in paragraph. It's the same thing. Ah, okay. So point form is always your last choice if you have no time. Okay. Because let's say if you have you you do 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 halfway, oh, then you realize the you only got uh, like five minutes left. Ah, but you got one more question you have to do. Then you point form. Ah. Ah, so if your teacher actually okay, then she will mark the point form. Okay. Better than better than leave it empty, my friend. Okay. So point form is always your last choice. Okay. Ah, so now you all write point form la, because uh, easier for you all to revise in future. Ma. Okay, next one I want to do...
Okay, I want to do the empirical question. The kinetic energy in Q is constant. Of course, ah, you know, because uh, the heat energy is used to do something else. Man. So it is not used to increase anything. So kinetic energy in Q is constant. So need to write. Uh, if you write it, if you write that out, actually doesn't give you any marks also. So can you can write it out. Uh, but then it's not necessary lah. This extra info, okay? Okay. Okay, so guys, are you all done? Okay, let me know if you're done. Huh? I will move on to the next question. Done? Rebecca, Rebecca done? Anyone else not done? Oh, no, no. <clears throat> Me eating also done? Guys, for those who are done, uh, you can actually start going to page number. What, what's that? What's the page number idea? Page number twenty-eight. Is that? Okay, I'll do one question for copper two oxide. One question for magnesium oxide for the empirical formula question. Ah, uh. okay. So when you go for empirical formula of this uh, question here, yeah, so they say they actually flow hydrogen gas across the hot copper two oxide until no change is observed. Uh, what happens here is you have hydrochloric acid plus substance G and then you flow hydrogen gas and then uh, you have reaction on the copper two oxide. Then they actually give you the results. This is the empty glass tube. This is before heating and after heating. Okay, just... Just to recap a bit, a bit first, what is copper two oxide before heating? So obviously, guys, before heating is copper two oxide means it's CuO, kind of. But then after heating, ah, uh, is it still CuO? No, ah. Uh, how the equation looks like? The equation looks like this: CuO after react with hydrogen, you're supposed to like kick off the H and then it becomes H two O and leaving out copper alone, kind of. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> means after heating it's supposed to be Cu. 
Okay. Can I? So uh, now they ask you, suggest substance G. G is actually reacting with acid uh, to give you hydrogen gas. So what do you think is G? Just now I got mentioned. Zinc, correct. Ah, so your answer here is actually zinc. Okay. And state the observation. Go guys, what's observation? The easiest thing to write an observation uh, is always think about, think about color or maybe if got any changes in physical state, then can. Uh. Uh, but then, the thing is, uh, you can't actually have any other physical state. So the only thing you can see is the color change. What is the original color of CuO? Ah, uh, then after heat uh, becomes Cu, then what is the color of Cu? Ah, uh, well, you say it become brown, not accurate enough. Why uh, is from what become brown? Ah, uh, so copper is brown, uh, okay, just in case you are wondering. Copper is actually a brown metal, like a copper one, yeah? But copper two oxide is what color? Hey. Ah, see, we are from fine. Don't know how to do. Ah, yeah. <laughs> red, ah? Oh, it's actually a black powder. Brick red. No, <laughs> very far away, very far away. It's black. Okay. So you're supposed to say, all right, your black powder of copper two oxide turns brown. What if we don't know it's black? How to answer? Then wrong. You if you just you if you only say turns brown, then wrong. You must say black become brown. Okay. How is this something we know? Uh you know it when we learn this. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a color that you have to memorize. Ah, that's why every student say, ah, oh, teacher, chemistry is so interesting, got so many colors. I always tell them, no, oh, chemistry is never interesting about colors because you have to memorize all the colors. <laughs> okay, so yes, guys, color is a set truth. You must memorize the color. Okay, so copper to oxide is black. Okay, like the lilac is not purple. <laughs> lilac is purple, just, just that you cannot write purple. Ah, okay. And then, uh, guys, this is not the worst chapter, you know, because there is a chapter full of colors and you have to memorize all the color. Ah, okay. you, you ask Wei Yang, uh, Wei Yang Form 5. Wei Yang, what's your favorite chapter in Form 4? <laughs> Confirm is Form 4, Chapter 6. Salt. Cry not, cry not. Uh, uh, Wei Yang going to be like, no. <laughs> so fun. Have fun, guys. <laughs> Okay, ma, it's fun learning colors, Karina. Okay, bye, I leave first. Don't la, don't leave, don't leave. Okay. Eventually you have to, you still have to face the colors. Okay, come back, come back, okay. Come back and cry. Don't don't cry and leave. Okay. Come back here and cry. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Uh, after that, guys, can you do the calculation by yourself? Okay, I give you a kickstart first. Lah. How do I get the mass of copper? Uh, how do I get the mass of copper? So I want to get the mass of copper only. I'm supposed to minus off the mass of glass tube, right? Uh, so I'm supposed to take 8.861 minus 8.093. Okay. Uh, face the colors. <laughs> okay. Then how about to find the mass of oxygen only? How to find oxygen only? Eh? If I want the oxygen only, oh, means I have to minus off the mass of tube and also the mass of copper. So technically, I have to minus the last one. So 9.053 minus 8.861. Okay. Need to write calculation in exam or just your answer? Uh actually just answers. Okay. Exam actually just answers. Okay. But if you can, then just write the calculation out loud, right? Doesn't it doesn't make you lose one muscle, right? Ah yeah. <laughs> okay, Ma, you the, the more detail you write, yeah. The better you understand, la. Okay, la. Ah, see later you press from calculator, ah. Then don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen students. 
basically, I, I write the whole number for I write everything for them already. Press strong calculator. I don't know what to say. Okay, so please don't do that mistake like that. Okay, so please do a calculation and then let me know uh, what are the numbers. Skill issue. <laughs> don't like that. Talib, don't, don't like that. Huh? Uh, one day I see you actually press your calculator. Huh? No mercy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Okay, guys, try uh, Let me know the answer. Uh. Yeah, after your minus, you're supposed to get uh, 0 0.768. Sure not. Uh, guys, this answer from Yash. Uh. Uh, yeah, if wrong, blame Yash. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Yes, not angry. <laughs> okay, so once you get this, how to find number of more? Uh, hey, the question, forget to give. Molar mass. Though. Okay, so guys, uh, the molar mass of copper, they have probably give uh, copper molar mass is 64, oxygen is 16. Okay, they're supposed to give an exam now, so don't worry about that. And just that this question we forgot to put in. Okay, so you're going to take 0 0.768 over 64, then 0 0.192 over 16. Uh, and then Both 0 0.012. Ah, okay. Ratio 1 to 1, 1 to 1. So it means that your answer is CuO. Why burn already become copper? Eh? The equation is what? What's the equation? It's CuO plus H2. Ma. So after burn become what? The H2 snatch the O become H2O. Then left with Cu. Because the H2O will get heated and then become water vapor. Ah, then 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 move to 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 the other uh side of the of the tube. Ah, you see, you see after you hit it, the water gonna go inside here. Okay. Yeah. How come ratio is one? Ah, because uh the actual step is supposed to be like 0 0.012 divide the smaller number of mole. But because both sides is the same number of mole, so you divide the same number of mole, you get one. Uh, so here also 0 0.012 over 0 0.012, you get 1. Um, okay, the actual way to find ratio is divide both sides with the smaller number of both. But since they are the same number, then the ratio is 1 to 1. This is what happens if you don't write calculation. <laughs> uh, this is better to write calculation. Uh, nah. Okay, and based on the answer, write a balanced chemical equation, right? Accidentally gave you the answer, which is CuO plus H2 turns into Cu with H2O. Okay. But they say balance equation. Ah, come give me the balance number. How to balance equation? Not balance, Xiaomi. You sure? Confirm. <laughs> Don't ask me question. Tell me. Balance, huh? <laughs> Testing all ma. See whether you can can actually realize or not. So one CU, one CU, one O, one O, H two, H two. It's already balanced. So, so I hopefully no one is struggling behind the screen, ah. Huh? Hey. So moving on to the next one, er, we actually have, can we determine the empiric formula of magnesium oxide using this method? So this method can be used for magnesium oxide. Uh, it's, a, it's, the, it's actually the same for both. I cannot use the magnesium oxide method for copper. So copper method uh, also cannot use for magnesium oxide. But then the explanation is different. Okay, what's the difference? What's the, what's the difference here? Uh, the magnesium method is what? What's the magnesium method? Is Mg 
plus O2, you become MgO. Man. So copper cannot do this because what? Just now I mentioned, copper cannot do this because copper is not reactive enough. You get it? But now, in the other way, I say that I change this to magnesium. Man. So let's say if I use MgO plus H2. Okay, now it's not direct heating, uh, guys. We are not talking about any direct heating for copper method, right? Copper method is I use H2, snatch the oxygen. So now you go in the same, same concept. Can the H2 snatch oxygen out from MgO? Ah, cannot. This one cannot. Why? Because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. So hydrogen cannot snatch his girlfriend uh, because hydrogen not handsome enough. Magnesium more handsome, hydrogen less handsome. Okay, so answer here is supposed to be no, because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen, he cannot react with magnesium oxide. Okay, can I? So, guys, remember, uh, only me can snatch Yash's girlfriend. Yash cannot snatch my girlfriend. Why? I'm more handsome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Ah, I see. Yash not denying it. I'm correct. <laughs> hey, Yash. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this one is a question about the copper oxide method. Okay. So I'll also do one question for the magnesium oxide method. Okay. I'm not gay, guys. Hey, no, no, you're not gay. Okay, just that you cannot snatch my girlfriend. Okay, so guys, ready? Huh? For those who are done, go to page number 30. I'm going to sing his class soon. <laughs> today, don't have account. No singy class today. So sorry. <laughs> ah, cannot, cannot, cannot go and backstab me. Oh. Okay. Uh, even if you can go to singing class, I will, I will, I will ban you from going to into a class. <laughs> Never mind, I snatch Mochi. Hey, hey, Mochi not here. Mochi downstairs. Uh, okay. So if moving on, yeah. Uh, so so scared of me need to ban. <laughs> oh, wow, yes, not bad. What a what a good comeback. So, uh, for here, guys, now moving on, right? page number 30. Uh, my boss is back. Oh, you haven't finished last one. Okay, okay. Shh. Look at this. Look at this fat cat. Singy carry it, yeah. Eh, Singy. <laughs> eh, go, 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 go away. So cute. I mean, you mean you're saying me, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Offended. <laughs> Better watch out for me. Oh. Hey, yeah. Cute, cute. My cat's so cute. Just like the owner. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, guys, this one, huh? ah, just like Chelsea. Oh, oh yes. What die? Uh? <laughs> what die is it? Ah, okay, okay, no, no. okay now page number 30. Uh. So page number 30 is an experiment for the magnesium oxide experiment. So we're supposed to actually have similar results. Okay, but then the result, uh, make sure you be aware of it, uh, is lead and crucible, with, then is plus magnesium, plus magnesium oxide. So if you see the difference between these two experiments, uh, is uh, the, for the copper, right, is before reaction is copper oxide. After reaction is copper, but here is before reaction is mag magnesium. After reaction is magnesium oxide. Ah, so one is having oxygen before reaction, 
Now it's having oxygen after reaction because they are actually two different concepts. Just now that one was what? About snatching girlfriend. This one, uh, no snatch girlfriend. Uh, this one is just Mg and O combined. Okay. So now, guys, what is the meaning of molecular formula? Uh, this one, uh, one of the, uh, I would say like the uncommon question. Because usually they have to ask, ask like empirical formula, right? But suddenly they go and ask molecular formula. What is molecular formula? So we know empirical formula is supposed to be like the simplest whole number ratio. Uh, but then uh, for molecular formula, supposed to be the actual number. So your answer here is supposed to be, okay, you change the, the keyword from simplest whole number to change it to actual number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. Okay. Okay, so please know both of the definition, huh? for either for empirical formula and molecular formula, both you have to know. Okay, then moving on. Uh, determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. Uh, what's the empirical formula of magnesium oxide? Just go along with the flow. They give you the molar mass. They give you the atomic mass. Okay, but I want to find the mass of Mg. So how to find mass of Mg? You're supposed to take the total mass of crucible lead and magnesium minus off away the mass of crucible and lead. So you're supposed to take 39.7 minus 38.5. Then for oxygen, uh, you must take 40.5 minus 39.7. Okay, if you don't understand, please ask me. Eh? I'm just going uh, slightly faster. Okay, so Chen Ying getting 1.2 and 0 0.8. Okay, any mistake? Uh, blame Chen Ying. Okay, la. Wait. Okay, ma. You have to be responsible for your own answer, ma. Right? No, 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 no. Just kidding, just kidding. Continue giving answer. <laughs> Later, next time, new teacher, I don't give you answer. <laughs> teacher, blame, blame, blame how to, how to live in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Little donkey talk. Hey, just kidding, na. Hey, anything wrong? It's all my fault. I take everything. Um, okay, so okay. <laughs> Are you what? I confident, ma, guys. I have confident with all your answers. Uh, okay, so how to find number of moles? So for Mg will be 12.2 over 24, while the oxygen will be 0 0.8 over 16. I believe you're supposed to get 0. Point 0, 0.5 I think uh, uh, I think uh, <laughs> 3 to 2 uh, you think why about 3 to 2 you calculate them first <laughs> the ratio uh, no it's not 3 to 2 uh, <laughs> you never calculate It's not you say confident now without the answer. No, 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 because I know the final answer, ma. I'm not like that. <laughs> hey, okay. So uh you should look, supposed to get 0 0.5 and 0 0.05. Okay, 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. Huh? So if you get the same number of mole, then ratio is one to one, then the formula is MGO. Okay. Ah, uh, Talim, what you're doing? How you get three to two? How you get three to two? <laughs> Nothing, I right? I <laughs> so every time the number of mole is the same. Ah, uh, actually, yeah, guys, if you see a trend, uh, no matter copper oxide or magnesium oxide, uh, they are all one to one. But it doesn't mean that you don't have to calculate that. Uh. Exams still have to calculate. Okay, don't think about the shortcut. Uh. Teacher, yeah, I know already. Exam they ask to calculate one to one. Um, okay. Would they give table? No, exam is just empty slot. So you just have you have to draw the table yourself. You have to list. You have to label out. And and label all this element, mass, number of mole, ratio, the Mg and O. Everything must label yourself. 
Ah, table have to draw yourself also. Ah, can ah. So I give you table is to save your time here. Okay, exam no table. If exam got table, ah, uh, ah, it's your it's just your teacher being kind. Okay, most of the time no table one. Okay, now write the chemical equation for the reaction in this experiment. So what is the reaction here? Is Mg ah, uh, not MgO ah. Uh, we started off with Mg, then you plus you heat with oxygen, you form MgO. According to ratio, it's MgO. Then, so according to ratio, it's MgO. Then, uh, what you're supposed to actually balance? Is this balance? I think it's not ah. Uh. So if you try to balance it, you're supposed to get 2 MgO and 2 Mg. Ah, very good. Thanks, Rina. Okay, why was the crucible covered as soon as the magnesium started burning? So we cover to do what? So we cover because if you start burning, uh, it's supposed to form the magnesium oxide already, right? But the magnesium oxide comes out as a, as a white film, as a white powder. So if you don't cover it, it might escape and then affect your mass. Ah, to not release the white film. Your answer sounds correct, but then it must be in a more atas wood. Okay. So to avoid the white film, escape into the air. Ah, not accurate result. Ah, cannot use that. You must mention the avoid white film. Ah, avoid white film from escaping. Prevent white film from escaping. Can avoid prevent white film from escaping is your best answer. I know it will eventually affect a result, but what they really want is the, the main point, the first point, is because if you release the if the white film fly out already, if the white film escape, then you will affect your result. Okay, why in this method? not suitable to determine empirical formula of copper 2 oxide. Ah, hey guys, the, the other way. So this method is what? Are we snatching boyfriend, girlfriend here? No, we are heating directly here. So can copper heat directly with oxygen? No. Why? Because copper is less reactive towards oxygen and the reaction is very slow. Ah, you want to do it, can I? You take one whole day just to do this experiment. Uh, waste of time. Okay, moving on. Yeah, explain on how to ensure the reaction has completed. Nice, as I told you, the only way for both experiments to make sure the reaction is complete is the same. Ah, uh, no matter which experiment, both is using the same way to ensure reaction is done, is to repeat your heating, cooling, and weighing process until constant mass is obtained. Ah, uh, so you have to do this. Okay, guys, this one came out in exam. Huh? I mean, like for those who done the exam, right? This one came out. So please be aware of this. Wait, my cat wanna come in. Let me open the door. Come in to shit ah. Hey, you want to go toilet, you go toilet. Don't make noise. Uh, 
Okay, so what are the two precautions that must be taken during the heating process? So this one is MGO, right? So technically, guys, this one, this experiment actually got, uh, it's not dangerous, okay? It's, uh, it's not actually flammable. It's not like explosive or so, actually. Uh, glove safety goggles, uh, that one not very... Okay, actually, can if you say like you wear gloves, wear safety goggles, that one is one of it. Lah. Uh, but then they say, uh, the the correct the I mean the more accurate answer is supposed to be the the two things that you do during the heating, during heating what you do, open and close. Ah, so these two things is the two answers, the best answer lah. But I mean like if you write, uh, wear safety goggles, wear gloves, okay lah, that one acceptable. But the two best answer for this topic is supposed to be this must be open at the lid must be open at intervals to allow oxygen gas to enter to react with magnesium. Secondly, you have to close it quickly again to prevent white escaping of white film. Ah, yeah. Wow, very smelly. Okay, once we're done with each experiment with one question, or uh, let me show you. Let me let us do some calculation. Uh, let me go for the simple one first. Huh? Wow, la we, very smelly, ah, mochi. Your shit, very smelly. Yes, all right. If you are done, we're supposed to go to page number 36, if not mistaken. The page where you see Panadol, Paracetamol. That's all done, all done. All done, huh? all done. What is that monster diagram on page number 37? Or oh, is it page number 37? With the paracetamol? Don't be afraid. 36, ah? oh, okay. 37 got other, other question. Ah? Okay, okay, let me go on with page number 36. Ah. 36 is this. Paracetamol. 37? Okay, la. it's just a very long break chemical that has a lot of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Ah, it's vitamin A. <laughs> ah, monster diagram, ah. Okay, la, not very monstrous. La. Okay. Ah, we are? Welcome to Form 5 again. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, this is a, this structure is supposed to be learned in Form 5. Okay. But it, why is it in Form 4 topic? Because it's just a diagram. Don't is they are not asking you anything related to the structure, to the drawing, to the properties. Okay, you just need it for calculation. Okay, so don't be afraid when you see like big weird diagram. It's very normal. Just treat it as a normal simple chemical that has a lot of carbon, H, and oxygen. Okay, let's I do this huh? Okay, let's go for page number thirty six first. You see the Panadol. Yeah, page thirty six is Panadol. Huh? 
Okay, they say paracetamol is commonly used medicine that can help to treat pain and reduce high fever. Then uh, they also used to relieve pains such as headache and stuff. They give you a lot of nonsense. I mean, like, not nonsense, lah, I mean, all right. Not very reliable uh, information. And then what is the chemical formula of paracetamol? Guys, what's chemical formula? Technically, is uh, writing out the full formula of this chemical. So what's the easiest thing to do? Count and then list down the number. Ah, uh, means you count how many carbon, how many H, how many oxygen. That's all. Ah, okay. So so you suppose to go and count, huh? Yeah. So you see, like, uh, okay, guys, how many carbon do you think that is? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, 8 carbon, ah. so C8. And then how many H? Ah, careful on H. Ah. H is where all students actually start to confuse and miss out this and that. So you see, H3, so this is 3. Ah. H3 means 3 of it. Ah. H3, H. Ah. And then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So H9. Then how many oxygen? 1, 2. 1, 2. O2. How many nitrogen? One. So guys, your formula, this is it. C8, H9, O2, N. Ah, so you see. Okay, my answer here is NO2, but the sequence doesn't matter. So just C8, H9, O2, N or NO2. Okay, what is the relative molecular mass of paracetamol, guys? Do you know how to calculate relative molecular mass? I just mentioned. Relative molecular mass is basically the total atomic mass. Do you see they give you atomic mass of all the chemical already? Ah, do your math. So, so C8 is, 1C is 12 times 8 plus H9. 1H is 1. So actually it's 1 times 9 is 9. Lah. Okay. Then O2. O1, O is 16 times 2. 1N is 14. Ah, so 12 times 8 plus 9 plus 32 plus 14. Okay. Um, you all press up later. Uh, I use my brain again. Okay? Quick maths. One five one. Oh, okay. It's one five one. Yay. Thanks. Correct, correct. Yes. Okay. So, guys, what is the molar mass of paracetamol? <laughs> ah. What exactly is molar mass, guys? I told you, uh, molar mass is just the total atomic mass, which is actually supposed to be the same. 151. Ah, so, they are, they are just testing your understanding what is molecular mass? What is molar mass? Ah, so actually molar mass represent all of the RAM, RMM, and RFM. Ah, so this chemical is a molecule. So RMM also consider molar mass. I was confused why they repeat the question. Because they are testing your understanding. Is molecular mass and molar mass the same thing? Actually, they are the same number. Okay. Ah, molar mass memang got the unit, yeah. If you are talking about molar mass, you, you can actually have a unit gram per mole. Okay, the molar mass unit is always gram per mole. Okay, but relative molecular mass got no unit. Okay, so when they put it into molar mass, they give you a unit, unit to it. Lah. But even, uh, but because they're actually the same number. Uh, the reason why they got unit because molar mass is used for calculation. Lah. You have to put inside the number of mole formula. But relative molecular mass usually just total, the top. Okay, now calculate the number of paracetamol molecule in 500 milligram of tablet. Uh, here comes the hard one. If you got 500 milligram, what can we start this? How do we start? So think about it. 500 milligram, find number of mole. Very good. But what should I start with? And I have how many formulas of number of mole? I have three formulas, right? Number of mole equals to mass over molar mass. 
volume over molar volume, number of particles over Avogadro content, right? Do you realize that 500 milligram is max? Then they want to find number of paracetamol molecule. Molecule is a type of particles. So it means you are looking for particles. Okay, you're looking for particles, huh? So you're gonna use the first formula, mass over molar mass, correct. But then can you use 500 milligrams directly into the mass formula? Uh, must change to what first? Change to gram first. Very good. Uh, that's why you see my first thing I do, do I do here is I change my milligram to gram by dividing 1000 because one gram equals to 1000 milligram. Okay. Uh, so I hope you all actually have this information to convert it back to gram. Then only you start your calculation. You see, mass over molar mass, 0 0.5 over 1151, which is the molar mass that you found for paracetamol in the previous question. Uh, then you're supposed to get this 0 0.00331. I mean, you're supposed to get a lot, uh, like a very long decimal place, right? So you it's best to take at least like three significant figures. Uh, I'm talking about significant figure, uh, not about decimal place. Uh. We're talking about, I want to take like at least three significant figure. Okay, you all know what's significant figure? Uh? You all from four know what is significant figure? Hopefully you all know. Uh. <laughs> okay, but then is this what you want? This is only like number of more. Uh. How to convert to particle? That's why I'm going to start to use a second formula. My number of mole equals the number of particle over Avogadro constant. So I have number of mole to put inside here. Do I have Avogadro constant? 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So to find your number of particles, you're supposed to bring this over. You take you multiply it. Okay. Uh, according to Lucy, your answer is 1.993 times 10 to the power of 21 molecule. Okay, the, the actual way is what? You, because you're looking for number of particles, right? You're supposed to go for unit as particles first. But because this particle itself is a molecule, so you can just convert my, my unit into molecule. Okay, but if they are actually asking atom in the molecule, then you have to top multiply how many atoms. Uh, means if I change the question, uh, okay, I change it to find the number of paracetamol atom, means you don't stop here. You need to take this number, multiply the number of atoms. Uh, if just right particle, you means you stop here. Uh, you need to go until molecule only can consider ending. If just right molecule, don't write particle, can. Means if you skip this, you just write molecule, can. Okay. Ah, but then if you're looking for atom, if you're looking for ion, you need to go like this, oh? like particle, go to atom, go to uh, ion, you have to multiply the number of atom. Okay, so means you have to do one more step if you're actually looking for atom or if you're looking for uh, ions. Okay. Can I, but here no need to do anything because the whole thing is a molecule and you're, lo you're looking for molecule, then it's a easy thing to do here. How to find ion if they ask? Uh, let's see. If you are looking to, to calculate a uh, number of ion, let's say then you have to check uh, if any CL, uh, how many ion? One positive ion, one negative ion, they will times two because of two ion. Ah, uh, if you are talking about like uh CaCl2, here got one positive ion, got two negative ion, in total got three ion, then times three. Ah, uh, that, that's the concept. What times two? Eh? The particle times two. Okay, because this is basically number of particles. Ma. So convert particles to atom, to molecule, to ion, multiply the number of it. Particle times two, yeah. Need to times the 6.02. 6.02 is this one? The times 2 is after you get the final answer of your particles. Ah. Okay. Means after you do everything finish ready, you get number of particles. Then if you want to convert particles to ion, convert, convert particles to molecule, convert particles to atom, you have to multiply the number of it. But molecule no need to multiply. 
Why? Because molecule is always one. One molecule. No matter how big the molecule is, you, you only have one molecule. Ah, correct. Yeah. So to convert particles to atom, particles to ion, you need to multiply. But if you convert the molecule, no need to multiply. <clears throat> yeah, nah? And lastly, what's the maximum number of mole of paracetamol can be taken by an adult? So uh, what they say is, if you go back up, adult can take two tablets four times in 24 hours. So what, what do you think you can do here? Two tablets. Maximum? Maximum eight tablets per day. Lah. Ah, eight tablets per day. Then, how many grams is it? Ah, okay, so you see, huh? you know maximum is eight tablets per day. Ma. Okay, because four times a day, every time two tablets, so eight tablets per day. Lo. So eight tablets per day, multiply the mass is four grams. Very good. So if this is four grams, how can you find number of more? So you see, the, the mass of paracetamol, uh, eight tablet, is actually four grams. So if it's four grams, then how to find number of more? Mass over molar mass. So you see. Okay, so you can say the number of more, at least also can. Ah, or you basically can just go with this like number of more equals to four over one five one. You're supposed to get the same same answer. Or you just take the number of more that we found just now. Then you multiply it, also get you the number of more for eight tablets. Okay, because this is number of more for one tablet. Uh, if you got eight tablets, then times eight. Uh, so you see, let's say you 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 do this, you you get 0 0.0265. You see, it's the same as this now. It's the same as my answer. Uh, so either way works. Okay. Then uh, moving on to the next one is determine the mass of 0 0.15 mole. Uh, how to find mass from number of mole? Again, number of mole equals to mass over molar mass. So mole is 0 0.15. Molar mass is 151. How to find mass? So my mass is taking 0 0.15 times 151. Okay, so 22.65 gram. Okay. Yeah, nah, simple calculation. Nah. Uh, so guys, uh, if this is okay, hopefully guys, uh, all the best for the coming exam if you guys have exam after after school holiday. So the answer will be post will be actually posted into uh the Google Drive. If you all know where to get answer, you all know where to get answer, right? In the same website, there's a there's a button to get to link to a Google Drive. With all the answers. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to replay this video, you can go to our YouTube channel. Okay. If, if you miss any seminar you want to watch, I will post all the seminar video into the YouTube channel. Okay. So search on YouTube TTC Education. Okay. Uh, well, after all seminar end ready, then I'll, I'll start post. Okay. Including my video. Lah, huh? So guys, if okay, I will call it a day. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Lah, huh? So I'll see you again next time. Yes, chain in. I'll see you when I see you. Okay, where's the answer? In the Google Drive. You go to the same website. Okay, there's a there's a link saying that I want hard copy. I want soft copy. I want PDF notes. Ah, that's the that's the same link that you can get your answer. Ah, okay. Can I? So okay, so guys, yes. Okay, I will see you when I see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.